Okay, this video has to do with section 2.2 from Mac 1105. And in this section, we're going to be discussing various characteristics of graphs, particularly the increasing, decreasing, and constant nature of a graph. We'll also look at how to identify the relative max and the relative min um, points of a graph. We will be using various algebraic tests in order to determine the symmetry of the graph. So in order to tell whether it wraps around the x-axis or the y-axis or the origin or none of those. We'll also be taking a look at the even and odd nature of functions and what that means with respect to symmetry. And then towards the end of the section, we are going to be graphing and eva evaluating and graphing piecewise functions and then also taking a look at the difference quotient and what that means with respect to the graph. Okay, let's start with uh, increasing, decreasing, and constant. Here you see some, uh, formal definitions given by um, the author of the book. And I think you're gonna really need to look at these graphs as we go along in order to tell whether something's increasing, decreasing, or constant. So I'm going to be pointing to things as I try to get you to understand these definitions. So this first definition talks about the function being increasing, and it talks about what's happening with respect to the x as well as the y values. So if you take a look here, what this increasing definition says is that let's compare two x values where one is smaller, the first one's smaller than the second one. If the y value that goes with the smaller x value if that y value is less than the y value that goes with the bigger x value, then this graph is said to be increasing. And that's because the y values are going up, up, up. They're getting bigger and bigger. If you want just a visual way to check this, you always scan the graph from left to right. And as you scan the graph from left to right, like you're reading a book, that's always the way we about, you know, we investigate our graphs. If the y values are going up, then it's increasing. Likewise, for this next graph, if you want a visual on how to tell whether it's decreasing, increasing and decreasing are all about the y values. If so, if the y values are going down, 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 as you scan this from left to right, not the other way, left to right, then it is said to be decreasing. And that's because the y values are falling. Here these y values are rising. With respect to the formal definition given in the book, they define it in this manner. If you compare two x values, the first one, x sub 1, is smaller than x sub 2. And you look at the y partners that belong to those x values. If the y partner that belongs to this smaller x value is greater than the y value, that belongs to the bigger x value, that means that the y values are falling. They are getting less and less and less. So that would mean that this is decreasing. Okay, when you're looking at a constant portion of a function, that means the y values are consistent when you're comparing two different x values, first one being the smaller one, second one being the larger one. Y partner of this one is the same as the y partner of that one, which gives this flat line because the y values are consistent. So let's take a crack at identifying increasing, decreasing, and constant um, intervals on, a, on some graphs of our own and just see if we can, you know, respond to them correctly. So in this first problem, you're being asked for open intervals on which the function's increasing in part A, on part, in part B where it's decreasing, and in part C where is it constant. This has some of all of some of each of that. So for instance, when you ask in part A, where is the function increasing? When is it that the y values are going up? That would be right here. Here the function is going up, up, up. Here the function is falling. Think of it as you're riding a roller coaster. If you were riding a roller coaster along a track that is laid where this function is, you'd be going down, down, down. Down meaning your y values are decreasing. Here you'd be going up, up, up because your y values are increasing and here it's just constant. 
So when you name your intervals of increase, decrease, or being constant, you are only to use X values. Use X's only when naming, increasing, I'll just abbreviate this, decreasing, or constant intervals. So when I go to answer part A, and I want to talk about this increasing interval, which is what they asked for in part A, that increasing interval has two endpoints, this one and this one. And you want to know what the X values are that are associated with those endpoints. So the X value associated with this endpoint is 3. X value associated with this endpoint is 5. So on the open interval from 3 to 5, the graph, or the, the graph of this function has an increasing behavior. In part B, it says name the open interval on which the function's decreasing. Well, that happens from here to here. Again, this section has an endpoint here and an endpoint here. And all along that interval, you are falling, falling, falling with respect to your Y values. So if you want to say this entire portion is a decreasing portion, you need to name it according to the X value. So this endpoint is associated with zero. And the other end of the decreasing portion is associated with three. So there's your decreasing portion. This was the increasing portion on the graph. This is the decreasing portion. And then last, we're going to name this constant portion. It's got two endpoints, each one associated with an X value. This is associated with five, where the constant portion begins, and then it ends at seven. <clears throat> I'll just abbreviate those. Okay, moving to this next example. In the next example, just get a shot at doing the same thing. We want to know in part A again, where is it increasing? Where there's a rather large increasing portion right in here. As you go from here to here, all of this has Y values that continue to increase all the way from here to here. So we have this in this endpoint on our increasing portion, and we have this endpoint. You want to name <clears throat> the X values associated with those endpoints. So the X value that goes with this endpoint of the increasing portion would be negative two. And then the end, this endpoint is associated with positive four. So that entire interval is increasing. As far as these other portions, there are no decreasing portions. No decreasing intervals. Only increasing that, that you know, these two pieces put together, that's just one big long increasing interval. That's constant. This is constant. Okay, so now we're going to do the constant intervals. So this constant interval, it has an endpoint here, but then goes off to infinity. So it actually stays constant all the way through negative infinity. But that being constant, that behavior of being constant with the Y values begins at negative 2. If you just raise your eyesight to the X axis, you'll say you'll see that that endpoint's associated with negative 2 and then it continues that constant behavior all the way to negative infinity. So we need to mention negative infinity, and we need to mention negative two. Negative infinity is the smaller value, so you name that first, and then the negative two. But you also want to name the other interval where it's constant. That interval of being constant starts at four and then goes off to positive infinity. 
And all along that entire interval from four to infinity, you're experiencing consistent Y values throughout. Okay, moving to the next page. We're going to talk about how to find a relative max and a relative min. Easiest way to um, describe this is relative min is your low point and your relative max is the high point. And then you're just going to be looking at certain phrases that they use when they're trying to elicit the X value from you as opposed to the Y value. So for instance, in this problem right here, find the numbers, if any, at which F has a relative max, maximum. So when they're using the phrase maximum, that means they're, they're looking for the X value at the max. What are these relative maxima as opposed to maximum? Then they're looking for the Y value at the max. So let's, talk, let's get those values right there. So the relative um, maximum would be um, the x value at the max. This is the max right here. That x value is 3. And then the maxima. would be the Y value at that max. So this is identified this point right here as three, three. So I guess we're gonna be using a three for both of those answers. In part B, it says find the numbers, if any, at which, <coughs> excuse me, there's a relative minimum, which will be giving the X value. And what is the minima? We have minimum and minima. Okay, so here's one point where it's a low point. There's more than one. There's one over here also. So when we're looking for the max, the minimum, we're looking for the x value at the minimum. X value would be two, and we're looking for the minima. That's the y value at that point. Now there are two of them, so we have to do this again minimum and minima. Okay, the minimum at this other one would be the x value, which is 4, and the minima would be the y value at that particular um, relative min, which is negative 1. And those are the answers for relative max and relative min. We had two of these. Moving to the next page where we're looking at a graph. These are some particular types of problems that were in my lab math that concern max and min. It says use the graph to find any values at which f has a relative maximum, the x, the x value at the max. So we're going to want to use the graph. Here's the max. You can see very clearly that that's the high point. What is the x value associated with it? 1. Okay, and then it says, and then use the equation to calculate the relative maxima. So if I want to know what the y value is that goes with it, I can get it right from here. f of x is the same thing as y. And y is equal to 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 24x plus 19. And we're going to plug in the x value that we got off of the graph. Okay, remember that just now we looked at the maximum relative max here and the x value at that point, which was a 1. And then you can do the calculation using this maximum, the x point. 
So you can plug that in to the calculator if you'd like, or you can just do it on your own, which I'm going to finish in the next video.